Okay, so somebody was just asking about what to do with a class that's really chatty, and I was thinking I would just talk a little bit about classroom management and how to address it with sort of a series of steps. And what I'm going to tell you is basically for me it's like a script. I um, follow these steps very faithfully and almost like on autopilot because I don't want to have to think too much in class. Teachers have to think a lot. So if you can automatize or make these go on autopilot, you're going to be a lot happier in class. So first I want to tell you about this here colander. Um, so I think of classroom management like a sieve or a colander. We used to have the sieve that was made out of like, um, it, it was like a woven filaments of metal. Um, and so it was like a mesh of these filaments of metal, but I can't find it. It had a hole in the bottom, so I think maybe my husband threw it away. So I got this colander instead. Um, so I think of classroom management as like a colander, right? And you want the holes that are left in the colander to be really small so that the people who get caught in your colander of classroom management are going to be most of your students. And then it's going to be the holes are very small, so very few of the students actually fall through to the bottom where you actually have to deal with them. So you want a system that catches the most students possible. And there's lots of ways to do this, but I just wanted to share some things that work for me. So the first thing, like imagine this colander with bigger holes, right? So you're making the holes smaller and smaller because you want to catch more and more students. So the first thing that um, like would make the holes get a little smaller is to have a very personalized classroom where you're talking about what the students are interested in. And for me, uh, not worrying so much about language targets has really helped me with that. It's helped me to focus more on the students and to be more responsive to what they're interested in talking about. So that's just the basic step, is keeping your classroom very personalized and very interesting to the students because interested students are gonna be more less apt to talk and more apt to pay attention to what you're saying. Um, also, you want to maintain kind of a speedy pace. You don't want to let any kind of activity sort of linger um, or get boring to the students. So you want to make sure that when you're sensing that the students are losing their focus or their attention is getting a little ragged, that you are moving on to another activity. So like tomorrow is the first day of school for me and I don't want any activity to drag. I don't want anything to start feeling boring. So I've got some ideas in my head about what I'm going to do, but I've always got something else that I can move on to. For instance, I'm going to start with the calendar, and I could talk about the calendar for the entire period. Um, basically, all I have in my classroom is like um, a calendar that looks like this. Um, it's basically just like that, right? The days of the week are not there, the month isn't there, the dates aren't there, it's just like a grid. And so I'm going to fill in the calendar with the students and I'm going to talk about the different days of the week and I'm going to write them on there. And we're going to talk about today's date, and we're going to talk about the weather today and I'm going to write the weather on there. I'll um, ask if it's anybody's birthday or maybe if they're still interested. We could go on and talk about, you know, if there's any events happening, if they have a practice or a game coming up and we can add those to the calendar. I um, had some students come in today who wanted to help me. Excellent kids, I really liked them. And they made me six of these. I only needed five, but they got carried away and they made six. So I have one for each class, so I'll be able to make a sort of a personalized calendar for every class. Um, so that is step one. Oh, so anyway, I was going to say that, like, yeah, you want to maintain a fast pace. You don't want anybody to get bored. So if the kids are really interested in the calendar, I could talk about that all period. But if their attention starts to wane, then I'll just move on to having them make the cards with one of their interests on there. And uh, we could talk about that. And if interest in that starts to wane too, then I have my document camera ready to pull out and I can do um, write and discuss. So we could write up what we talked about and as we're writing it, we're discussing it. And if that gets boring, then I could always turn to a quick quiz. Um, I, I gotta start with an oral quick quiz and if that gets boring, then we can always bust out some paper and do a regular quick quiz on paper so that they're like, ooh, we had to turn in a grade on the first day of school. This lady is really strict. So keeping it personal and keeping it kind of moving along at a fast pace so that they're not getting bored and always kind of having like a plan B in your head in case plan A gets boring 
um, is a way to make the colander have smaller holes in it so fewer kids are going to fall through. Um, but there's always going to be kids who want to test the limits, right? Like even if it's super interesting, they're still going to want to test and see if they can talk. So one thing that you can do is talk really slowly. So every time you say something, you kind of stop, take a breath, look at the class, and make sure that they're still with you. And if you see somebody who's like about to start talking or like they're leaning towards their partner or they're looking bored, then you can just walk over to your class rules and I do this in a very sort of formulaic way. So I am teaching away, blah, 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 and I notice, I take a breath, I look around and I notice that somebody over there is about to start talking. So I take a deep breath. But I don't let myself look frustrated. I just take a deep breath and I think to myself, okay, thank goodness I have a chance to show these students my leadership. I literally think that to myself so that I'm in a good frame of mind. Like this is a positive thing, right? I'm about to show these kids that I mean business. I take a deep breath and I slowly, with a little smile on my face, thinking to myself how lucky I am that I teach languages and I have a chance to get my class eating out of the palm of my hand. I walk over to my rules and I touch my rules. Usually it's rule number two. One person's talking and the others are listening. I point to the rule and I smile at the class like this. Then I look back at the original kid who was thinking about talking. I kind of give him a little like, mm-hmm, I know who you are. But I don't call him out. I don't make it like really personal. And then just to keep it on a light note at the end, I just kind of smile at everybody. And then I just leave and walk back to teaching, blah, 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 blah. So if you do that every single time, like with a lot of consistency, every single time somebody is looking like they're about to talk or just a little tiny bit of talking is happening, even if you have to do it like a hundred million times in the period, okay? Even if you hardly instruct anything at all, if you just keep on quietly, calmly, and with a smile on your face, walking over to the rules, the students start to think like, well, this is getting a little boring. Like this lady, she doesn't lose her cool. She doesn't get all crazy. She just walks over to these rules and points at them. And you'll start to hear them kind of shushing each other because they know what's coming. Like it's not fun anymore. It's not interesting. It's like, I'm just going to walk over to these rules and point to them. And it's going to be the same thing every time. And there's no fun in that. But there's always these kids who want to see like what you're going to do next, right? Like these kids, like you've made the colander holes a little smaller, but they're still following through. So if you have a kid who like every single day, like you noticed a couple times today and a couple times tomorrow, they're still doing the same behavior, then you've got to take it to the next step. So what I do, and once again, this is very formulaic, I walk over to the kid, like I'm teaching, blah, 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 blah. They start doing whatever they're doing. I kind of look at the rest of the class like, <sighs> Sorry, you guys. I don't say this, but I kind of communicate this with my body language. Like, sorry, you guys. I'm going to have to deal with this, you know. <clears throat> I take a deep breath, calm myself, and I just slowly walk over to the kid. It's really important that you pause right before you get to the kid and that your feet are facing the kid. So you've, like, completely stopped whatever you were doing and your body language is like, I am on you. Then take a deep breath. <sighs> and I learned this from my classroom management teacher in graduate school, Ken Peterson, a really awesome guy. He's retired now, love that man. He taught me so much. He taught us to get down literally like kind of kneeling on the floor, like so we're kind of eye to eye with the kid or even a little lower than the kid. And this communicates like, I'm willing to get down on your level. If you're standing there like this above the kid, like looking down on them, that communicates a whole different power dynamic. But if you're down near them, or kind of looking up at them even, it communicates like, I'm about to get down, be on your level like I'm not afraid to be down here with you and I don't have to be like down looking down on you like exerting my authority I'm gonna have sort of a more relationship built with you so I get down with the kid and I say to them where nobody else can hear right but everybody else is kind of like mm, what's going on like they know this kid's always disrupting so they're waiting to see what's gonna happen and they're hoping that you have the personal power and you have the courage and you have the conviction to stop this kid in their tracks before they take over the class because these kids know how it works. They know that teachers with no personal power or little personal power or who are feeling fearful of confronting a kid are gonna let this kid run the class. They've probably been in classes with this kid before 
or at least they've been in classes with this kid this year where they're running the teacher. And so they're watching you, they're hoping like, wow, I hope she kind of, you know, nips this kid in the butt. So everybody else is just kind of watching. They're probably, you know, just kind of like, whoa, what's going on? So you get down with the kid and you, you say this, I say this to them anyway. Um, I go, wow, this happened. This is hap, wait, okay, sorry. I go, this happened yesterday. I don't name the behavior because then they're gonna argue. I go, this happened yesterday. It's happening again today. And if it happens again in the future, we're gonna have a longer conversation and you're not gonna be smiling at the end. And then I smile at them like that and usually they smile back. It's kind of like human nature, like if somebody says the word smile and smiles at you, like you'll probably smile back. And then Ken taught us this and I actually do this. You might not wanna do this, but I do it. I go, this happened yesterday or whenever. This happened yesterday, it's happening again today. And if it happens again in the future, we're gonna have a longer conversation and you're not gonna be smiling at the end. Now who's your favorite teacher? And then they just wait to see what they say. And they'll say one of three things. There's really only three options. They'll either say you, most of them do. It's kind of weird. <laughs> you just confronted them, but you're down there with them and you're smiling at them so they're probably just gonna say you. If they say you, I just give them like a fist bump or a high, when I learned about this, fist bumps weren't really a thing for me. I high five, elbow bump, whatever you want to do, and say thanks. And like maybe you're pretty awesome too. They're either going to say it's you, or they're going to say it's not, well, not you. And in that case, you go like, I would say, well, you can't win them all, and just kind of wink at them. Or they're going to say a different teacher. Well, it's Mr. Peterson. And then you're like, well, he's pretty cool. And maybe try to give him a high five or a little fist bump or kind of wink at him or something like that. And then just get up and like nothing ever happened, just resume teaching. Nobody else has really heard what happened, but what they saw was you walked over, you were calm, you took a deep breath, you got down by the kid, and at the end you kind of had a positive like interaction. Now that's really powerful for the other kids because now they know that your main focus is to build a relationship with everybody. So let's say that this kid is not getting caught in your sieve and you need to like strengthen up the sieve and make these holes even smaller. So like tomorrow the kid comes back in and they do it again. Well, you already told them. And like for everybody else, you're just continuing to point at the rules, right? But you kind of know who your tough case is now. So the kid comes back the next day and they continue to do the same thing. And you've already told them like, we're gonna have a longer conversation and you're not gonna be smiling at the end. So you have to make good on that promise. So it happens again and you just go over to them the same way, just kind of, just kind of get down by him and go, can you just wait in the hall because we are gonna have that longer conversation. Now, if they refuse, you need to get on the phone right away and call security because this kid's a really tough case and like, if they're refusing to go out in the hall when you ask them, this is a really big, serious problem. You've already, I mean, they're falling through a really small hole. So, most of them will go on out in the hall. I've only had a couple kids in my life refuse to follow my direction to go out in the hall. Um, so when they go out in the hall, I go out with them and I stand with them. I don't confront them like face to face. I like literally stand with them like they're usually leaning against the wall or something like that. So I stand and I look away. I don't look them in the face. I look away and I say the same thing every time. I say, what was happening? And so they name the behavior. Sometimes you have to push them a little bit. They kind of try to like weasel out of it. Don't name the behavior yourself. Make them name it. So if you go, what was happening? They might be like, well, not much. Well, what was happening right before you got set in the hall? What did we talk about yesterday? You have to kind of keep pushing some kids. So once they name the behavior, then you want to say this. Or I say this anyway. I learned this all from Ken. How is that a problem for your classmates? And they might not name why it's a problem for their classmates. You might have to push a little bit. Don't get in their face though. You're like looking away from them. The whole point is like non-confrontational. Like you just want to be like, yep, I'm just sitting here rapping with you and I'm more interested in that speck on the wall over there than looking you in the eye. Because looking kids in the eye, especially this kid, this kid has like fallen through every hole. You, I mean, you've got small holes, right? You've built a pretty strong sieve and they've still fallen through. So this kid is a tough case. So you don't want to be like confronting them. So I ask him, what is it that was happening? How is this a problem for your classmates? How is this a problem for me as your teacher? And how is this going to be a problem for you if it continues? And usually the kid will tell you like what their pain point is. They'll be like, well, you're gonna call my parents or you're gonna send me to the office. 
So then, 